So um, I'm bringing you this story here today because I just thought it was interesting. Um, so I wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, U.S. Senator drafts bill to boost employee private stock ownership. The reason, now the reason why I'm making a video about this, about about employees uh, boosting, uh, or rather the bill to um, help employees buy stock in the companies that they work for, because buying stock, investing in the stock market, mutual funds, CDs, and things like that, these are things that help generate and build wealth. You know, and if you are a person who is working for a company and you feel like you're not making all the money that you could possibly or you have children that you're trying to build a future for buying stock owning stock real estate and, and investing in the stock market period is a good way to generate wealth you know usually the stock market is for long-term investing so that your money can grow and accumulate over time you know but also depending on the stocks that you buy how much money you invest initially you can get a pretty big return you know, and um, use that money to invest in starting a business, things like that, or even sending your kids to college. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and get into the story. I, I found it interesting, um, and it, I think it would benefit a lot of people if they found this kind of thing interesting too. This is a way to take your money and with very little effort, have your money work for you and make you more money. But anyway, I'll continue. A bipartisan pair of lawmakers on the U.S. Senate Banking Committee are planning to introduce a bill that aims to entice private corporations to give their employees larger equity stakes in their companies and promote longer-term investing. The draft bill titled, quote, the Encouraging Employee Ownership Act, end quote, is being rolled out by Virginia Democrat Mark Warner and Pennsylvania Republican Pat Tomei, which is this guy right here. Uh, and will be made public as soon as Thursday, according to spokeswoman, a spokeswoman for Warren's office. The measure comes at the same time that the U.S. Secretary, I'm sorry, Securities and Exchange Commission is expected to shift its regulatory gears to focus more intently on ways to boost capital formation more broadly. Critics have said the SEC has in the past neglected this mission as the number of initial public offerings have fallen while the number of regulatory requirements placed on companies has increased. Wall Street deal-making attorney Jay Clayton, who was nominated by President Donald Trump to serve as chairman of the SEC, is expected to make capital information, I'm sorry, capital formation a centerpiece of his tenure. He is still awaiting his confirmation hearing before the Senate Banking Committee. Any date has not yet been announced. So I'll leave the link to this in the description box so you guys can look into more into the story yourselves. Again, if you have interest, um, everybody seems to like money and have interest in money. So I guess it would only s serve logic that people would have an interest in things that could possibly or potentially help them to build, gain more money and build wealth for the future. But, you know, that's all up to you guys if you, you find any interest in that. Um, but when you're, you know, digging out of trash cans 20 years from now, don't say that I didn't try to help you out with this information or at least try to put you up on something. Because you guys, some of you guys may work for a company who's probably going to be a part of this initiative to boost employees, um, uh, 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 their, their participation in the stock market by giving you the option to do so. So, that's it for now. I'll be back with you guys in a minute with the next story. Hey guys, so I'm back with another story. Um, and as you can tell from the image that you see in front of you, it's about yes, Donald Trump. But I found this story interesting, and well, I wouldn't say ironic, but I, f I found it interesting. Um, and, and, and well, I guess I guess a little bit ironic, I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it could serve as irony, it, in a sense, being as though this dude wants to spend so much money on the military. But anyway, I'll get into it. U.S. President Donald Trump welcomed a record surge in the stock market on Thursday, a day after the Dow blasted through the 21,000 mark for the first time after his speech to Congress. Quote, Since November 8th, Election Day, the stock market has posted $33.2 trillion in gains and consumer confidence is at a 15-year high. Jobs, end quotes, the Republican president wrote on Twitter. In an address to Congress Tuesday night, Trump said he wanted to boost the U.S. economy 
with a massive tax relief and make a $1 trillion push on infrastructure. Bets that have helped Wall Street scale fresh records since the election. So, you guys heard it. I mean, apparently, as bad as Donald Trump is as being president, somehow, ironically enough, he's actually good for the economy. I I find that very interesting. Um, And a little bit hard to believe, actually. Um, But... Let's see where all this goes. Um, like the story that I uh, presented to you guys at first, you know, if this guy, if Donald Trump being in office and saying the things that he's been saying is going to help boost the economy and boost Wall Street, more people are spending money and, and investing. Look, he may not be the guy you wanted in office, but like I said in the last the last report, take advantage of this opportunity to invest in the stock market. Take, because if the stock market, if, if the stock market is, if, if if the economy is being boosted, then it pays to invest money in the stock market. It pays to have your money work for you, even if it's just for the next four years. It can still benefit you in some way. So we can't all be closed-minded about everything. Do I do I agree with his policies? No. Do I agree with a lot of things he's doing? No. Do I agree with the arms race? Hell no. Do I agree with the $54 billion increase that he wants to give the military while he wants to take that same $54 billion from other federal programs like Medicare and Social Security? Do I agree with that? Hell no. However, if he is boosting the economy, get in on the ground floor, invest in the stock market, try to make your money work for you, benefit from it. This dude may be a screw up as a president, but... He can act, but if this is actually the case and the economy is going to continue to surge upward, do what the rich people are doing and benefit from this, profit from this. Take advantage of this, guys. But that's all I have for this story. I'll be back with you guys in a couple of seconds with the next one. Hey, guys. So I'm back with another story. Um, this story here I, I found interesting. And I, I think, I, I think I, this is the same person that I remember reading a story or, or watching a video on YouTube about. Um, uh, I'm not sure, but, but the circumstances sound familiar. But apparently there's a whole new, uh, a whole new uh, wrinkle to this whole situation. I'm going to just go ahead and get right into it. Some of you guys may actually you know, recognize this woman. I'm going to see. Now, her last name, I'm going to try to pronounce that as best I can. Rachel Dolzal, a former civil rights activist who was embroiled in controversy after identifying as black, despite being the biological daughter of white parents, has changed her name to Nkechi Nkeche Amare Diallo. Court records showed on Thursday. Now, Diallo, I don't know how many of you guys, well, anybody, any of you millennials, you're not going to know this guy. But Amadou Diallo was a guy who was shot 41 times in, um, I think it was Brooklyn, New York, um, by the police um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the early 90s, early to mid 90s. It's, I just find it strange that she chose that last name. Anyway, Diallo, 39, was profiled in a story last week by British newspaper The Guardian that mentioned she had changed her name on legal documents. Court records posted online by Spokane County in Washington State indicated that Dozal petitioned to change her name to Diallo, which has African roots, and that a judge granted the request October 7th. She cannot immediately be reached for comment. Dozal resigned in 2015 as president of the Spokane chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Color People, more affectionately known as the NAACP, following an uproar when media reports disclosed her parents were white. Diallo was raised in a home with adopted black siblings, attended historically black University, attended historically black Howard University in Washington, D.C., and has produced artwork and taught classes about black culture. Her parents have told U.S. media she has Caucasian roots. Despite receiving heavy, heavy criticism for identifying as African American, Diallo has continued to insist she considers herself to be black. She told The Guardian she had been unable to obtain even a low-level job, receiving only offers to appear on reality television and pornographic films. She also said 
she had to resort to food stamps to feed her family and feared she might become homeless. So, um, I don't really know what to think about this. I mean, this woman wants to identify as black. She was raised in a, in a household with her white parents um, who had adopted uh, black children. So she grew up with black siblings, um, black adopted siblings, went to a, a HBCU, um, toured black culture, has done artwork depicting black culture. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you guys think about this? I mean, yeah, it was, a, it, and, I, and, and I do recall the, the story somewhat. If I can actually find the video where I actually heard it, I'll put a link into the description box. Um, I think, um, I think, I think Ticket TV, I think I watched, I think he was the, the person that I watched the video on. And, and I think also the advice show also. So if I can find those videos, I will put the links in the description box. But I will put a link to the actual uh, the actual news report in the description box so you guys can at least follow this version of the story. But I, I, I really don't have an opinion on this. I mean, the woman wants to identify as black. She wants to be black. I mean, maybe she... I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say about that. Um... I think that people should be proud to be who they are as opposed to trying to be something that they are not. Um, but at the same time, though, I mean, this woman wants to identify as, as black. I mean, who knows? I mean, is it a scam? Is she trying to defraud people? I mean, in, in fact, from what I remember from the actual uh, video that I watched, I, I think it was it, people kind of came at her as as if she was trying to defraud colleges by claiming that she was black and things like that. I it, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I'm not 100%. Um, but anyway, the link will be in the description box if you guys are interested in um, following up on this. But I just thought it was interesting that um, that this woman who, who apparently is Caucasian wants to be considered white. Uh, or black, rather. So, And um, I'll actually try and find an actual picture because this picture is a little fuzzy um i mean from a distance she looks like she could be mixed i mean i don't know if that's actually her she looks like she could be mixed i'll try and find a different picture of her and um and put it towards the end of this video so you guys can see um more of a close-up view of her but i mean it, at first glance i look at her she looked like she could be mixed her hair her her skin tone is kind of uh kind of like olive like like it's not light pale is not dark brown. She, I mean, she looked like she could be mixed. But anyway, that's all I have for this one. Uh, now that this is up with termination, like, learn, and subscribe, and I'm out of here.